you know, catcher coming in fifth, you know, I see it as something that I I could have done more. Mm -hmm. And it's so insanely motivating for me to do more for her because I believe that she did a lot. She worked really hard. She did everything I asked of her. I believe I was asking the wrong things. I had some holes in my game. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use that because I know what that feeling was when she didn't do as well as I thought she was capable of Mm -hmm. because of me. You know, I take complete ownership of this. It's like, I, I don't think that she was underperformed. I think that she did phenomenally. She was not unfit. Mm -hmm. She won two of the events. Uh, There's just some holes in my game that I need to fill. And this is the negative side or the dark side. Like I'm incredibly motivated by that. Like I don't want that feeling again. What confidence is has nothing to do with winning or the leaderboard. What confidence is, is knowing that you giving your best efforts is enough. Okay, Ben. Welcome back. Thanks, Patrick. Once again, there's been a long delay and we will blame the CrossFit Games for it. Um, <laughs> but that's what we're going to talk about as well. So we'll, we'll try to make up for it. Um, we're about a month, a little less than a month maybe out from the CrossFit Games. Yeah. Um, you and I haven't even really talked about the games too much. So that's sort of what I want to talk to you about is just what the games were like. You know, what did, uh, obviously, new venue, lots of new things, what you learned, tons of stuff. So let's just start with just overall experience this year at the Games. What stuck out to you, you know, a few weeks after as sort of the big moments for you? All right. So the big obvious ones are, um, to me, is like the events slash the programming, the venue, and um, where people finished on the leaderboard. Yep. That's kind of like if I had to give overarching themes to the, like, what, like, what I remember Mm -hmm. and what, uh, you know, kind of stuck out, that's where I would go. So um, starting with um, the venue, because it seems like the most obvious one, um, Madison is the right city for us. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. I I think that that mid-market city, like the Madisons or the Boulder Colorados or, you know, the Charleston, South Carolinas, I think those are the right towns for us much more so than LA where we bring, you know, 50, 60,000 CrossFitters to LA. And it's like, yeah, nobody notices. Actually, it's not crickets at all. It's more like, <laughs> you know, horns yeah. and no one notices. It's, yeah. It doesn't matter at all. Yeah. Like they, you know, when you have the Lakers and you have the Grammys, it's like CrossFit games are not that mm-hmm. big of a deal. You bring 60,000 CrossFitters to Madison, Wisconsin in August when there's no kids in school. And it is, I mean, it was a complete city takeover. Mm. Every hotel outside of it had like eight or nine story banners mm, of the games. Very cool. There were um, like fat heads in all the store shop windows. There was welcome CrossFitters and signage everywhere. The sports convention center there did a phenomenal job of welcoming us. It's just a really cool town in general in terms of the outdoorsiness and the, the amount of races and um, activities they have. It's on an isthmus between two really nice lakes. I mean, it just... The city's amazing. Yeah. So I believe that they hit a home run with the city, minus the weather thing. Yeah. But I like the, I like the adversity of weather, so I scratched that one off the table. Yeah. I still think it's a, I think still think it's an A for the city. The venue I feel like took a step back. Mm. I think if we had been in um, the Madison, the Alliant Energy Center for the last four or five years, and then moved to the StubHub Center people would like jaws would yeah. drop. Like we're been like aromas to the- It's, it's, it's an amazing step. Yeah. Like, so I, th- I believe, I feel like it was a step backwards a little bit. Um, it's the, the indoor didn't have the same feel quite as the tennis stadium. The, the I almost said the erection. <laughs> the, the, the thing they erected in the parking lot uh, <laughs> was incredibly impressive, but paled in comparison to the soccer stadium. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, you know, it was good. They did a good job with what they had there, but just apples for apples, it I don't think it compared. Yeah. I did like the fact that there was this um, opportunity for like the bike race and yeah. they could, but they could have done that and the, you know, UC campus that they had in, at the StubHub Center. Um, I really liked the lake. That's a very unique thing. That's only, you know, three quarters of a mile, half a mile away from the venue. So that's cool. So love the town, venue, eh, mm-hmm. C. You know, yeah. you know, where I give um, the Subhub Center like a B plus. Um, 
So, you know, I think it's still a good move. Um, but I think it's, it's the first year and I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt that the next year they'll figure the venue out thing out a little bit better. Comfortable. Yeah, and, yep. exactly. Um, next programming. One question yeah. about the, the venue or the location is this is the first year that it hasn't been in California, which means that it's the first year that mm. the athletes weren't tested in some part by 105 degree weather on black rubber matting. Yeah. Right. Does that matter? Like, do you, I mean, we didn't see, you know, it wasn't like a, a huge shift in the, the athletes who did well in the heat of California didn't do well in the relative crappy uh, weather we don't know in Madison. That. But yeah. do you, does like, does the weather itself play a factor in who does well and who doesn't do well? Yeah. So we saw weather in a, in a different sense, right? Mm-hmm. So instead of 105 or, you know, rumors of 120 degrees during Murph, um, we saw, you know, high 50s low 60s yep. and rain. rain yeah so weather in a different sense but you still have the adversity of weather you know but then there is also the controlled environment of being inside a, yep. a dome stain for half of the events so you know in a perfect world i'd want the whole thing to be outside with adversity everywhere yeah i think it's if we're testing for the world's fittest i think that should be survival of the fittest in a sense not mm-hmm. truly like just yeah. last man standing not everyone get, games not but... everyone gets swords and bows and arrows yeah. and <laughs> Maybe. maybe, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I do believe that there should be some sort of um, ability to cope. Um, I yeah. like the analogy that like the winner of the CrossFit game should be you know, the person that lives the longest in the zombie apocalypse, you know, yeah. person that has strength and speed and can has enough power and all that stuff. And, you know, minus the skills of like building fires. Mm-hmm. And um, so I like, I like the element of the heat and all the rest. Yep. So I do think it took away from that. Um, did it take away enough that the winners didn't win and the fittest weren't the fittest? I don't believe so. I think it had some effect somewhere along the way, though. You know, um, the other thing that I think is um, is interesting, kind of like that blur between the venue and the programming, is this is the first year in a long time we haven't seen like the wow factor event, mm. like Camp Pendleton, mm-hmm. like triathlon, you know, th- up Mike Wave Mountain, you know, seven k part of a triathlon. Mm-hmm. We didn't see the 7K trail run where opening event last year, we're flying you to, we're yep. getting on a plane yep. at 3.30 in the morning and we're gonna open this thing up with a 7K trail run. You know, we didn't see anything even remotely close to that. Even a few years ago, it was, you know, I mean, even years and years ago, 2010, it was, we're gonna do a swim and do a Murph on the beach. Mm-hmm. You know, last year, um, meaning 2016, had that big, huge trail run. Mm-hmm which is a, you know, a very long event, 50 minutes to an hour. And it also had Murph, yep. which is another 40 minute workout. The longest thing we saw this year was 20 minutes, was mm-hmm. 27 minutes with the swim, the run, swim, run. 27 minutes, the next longest one was a 18 minute bike. Yeah. And that was it. Yep. Everything else is pretty controlled. So, you know, if there was a, um, I love, you know, I don't want to knock the program because I thought the program is really well done and really well thought out this year. There's always going to be hiccups, but I think that um, the test was phenomenal. Yeah. Um, I think if I had my druthers, if I had my, I think that it needs at least one of those wows. Yeah. One of those ones that knocks the athletes back a little bit in terms of like, am I capable of doing that? You know, am I capable of doing Murph in 120 degrees in a vest unpartitioned? Yep. Holy crap, I don't know. Yeah. Am I capable of doing that run, you know, up those mountains, you know, for four to five miles? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And this was very controlled. It's yeah. like every athlete there does a running and swimming, you know, right. no big deal. If that's the wow one, the next wow one was probably the bike or the yeah. obstacle course. Yeah, I'd say the bike. Yeah, so the bike, but it's a bike. You know, it's it was a cool, super cool event and yeah. incredible test uh, you know when i worked with some of my athletes some of them were really exposed on the bike mm. um brook wells mm-hmm. and i was like they have to when we went for our bike rides on cape cod and training yeah. before they announced it i was like well, they have to put a bike in like yeah. the fact that some of these people can't bike like they can't be on the podium if they're not if they can't bike mm-hmm. like this is a test of the fitness yeah. like biking is is a pretty big part of fitness 
I think it's fun. It was that was a phenomenally well programmed event and just cool. Whenever it's a race, yeah. like a race is a race. It's yep. like just exciting. Yep. Um, a little bit NASCAR style with like pole positions yep. and time trials. You know, kudos to the team for putting that together. Um, the other wow factor was the obstacle course. Obstacle course was wow. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was. It's it's interesting though because when I think of wow, that's kind of what I think about. I think about the bike and the obstacle course. Wow, from a from a. Uh, spectator experience but what you said was really interesting which is uh you know there was no like wow factor in the sense of these athletes looked at and said yeah. i don't know what i'm gonna how right. i'm gonna like but you look at the bike and you're like okay i can ride a bike it'll be 20 minutes i can handle the it. La- the obstacle course i can just i'll just do it the previous years dave cash at the athlete dinner scared the pants off these people right. like if you get scared if you think this is something you don't want to do come and tell us we'll yeah. make you warm and cozy <laughs> your crossfit games will be over yeah see you later drop the mic and walk out right I mean, there was nothing. There was nothing close to that this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if that's a shift in mindset where we can be a little more corporate structured. We can just truly test in these nice, well-defined lines, um, and we're getting away from that kind of like mental brutality and physical. Mm-hmm. Um, or if it's uh, just something that's a departure for the year because the new venue and feeling things out. So it'll be interesting to see what yeah. comes of this next. Could year. also be like you can only one up yourself so many times before you need to yeah sort of I've, I've thought about that a little bit um we train and program for some one-ups yeah we were ready for some things right. that were bigger and badder than do you um, want to talk about that or do you know i'm gonna okay. say <laughs> yeah <laughs> i thought so i just figured yeah. that um okay so um let's talk about results and what you guys learned throughout the the four or five or six days whatever it sort of yeah. So the obvious one is Matt Fraser is a stud, yes. right? Like he's- um, In case there was any question. <laughs> yeah, right. I know. I'm kidding. Um, so, and it is super incredibly well-deserved. You know, I haven't seen everyone and spent time with everybody training, but I have obviously spent a fair amount of time with Matt. And he. the reason he's as good as he is, is not because of some innate talents or gifts or someone knighted him. You are now the fittest and he's now the fittest. It's He has worked so hard. I know it's cliche, like mm-hmm. hard work pays off. And you know, it's like, it's not about talent. It's about grit and determination. He, nobody has put in that I've seen the level of just pure man hours, but then couple that with focus man hours and then couple that with when he's not doing the man hours like full on like like you're in a vacuum type isolation recovery type Mm -hmm. mode he is like singularly focused on one thing in his life and that is winning the crossfit games i'm sure he's going to do this for as long as he can and then he'll go and do other pursuits and do them phenomenally but for right now there is nothing that is a close second there's nothing even second at all mm. potentially maybe guns and his girlfriend but i i mean it is crossfit games world champion domination dot every i cross every t and every minute of my day is set up for that purpose if the basic thing is like that which moves me towards my goals, I will give full effort. And that which does not gets no attention. Mm. There is nothing that gets attention in his life. It's no extraneous details. I mean, it was, if it was like one of those like old family circus cartoons, you know, where like, you know, the little boy yep. walks through the street and you see the dots and stuff like that. It would be literally like from his house, dot, dot, dot to the track, dot, dot, dot back to his house, dot, dot, dot to the gym, dot, dot, dot back to his house, dot, dot, dot basement workout on rower and skier dot 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 bike and then dot 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 sleep everything in between that is like no music no tv it's just like no talk it's just focused effort towards one goal Mm. you know one of the extreme examples I, i i kind of like he's so good at finding something and getting better at it so he works his starts for sprints and not like i'll do them like you know um work with a coach and then i'll do them like every 10 days like all the time he's in blocks like driving out of a stance between sets between workouts like it's something he does religiously because it was a weakness i mean he's the epitome of hard work pays off yeah the crazy thing about matt is when he kind of came onto the scene 
he was already like it was already determined that he was going to win the CrossFit Games mm. like three years ago. That's what people think, right? But but that was just like he, the he, sense. That's of it. not when he came on the scenes, though. That's he came true. on the scenes yeah, no, you're right. in yep. regionals before that, yep. and came in fifth when they all took three athletes. Yep. That's when he came on the scenes. And that was his rookie year. So people see it as he came on the scenes and he's going to win the games. Yeah. What people don't see is this kid could move a barbell, mm -hmm. but he couldn't hang in rowing or right. gymnastics yep. or Metcon at all. And he had to work so hard to get there. To get to that. It's not just like itself. he flipped a switch, he jumped in the sport and I was really good right. at it. Of course. it's He's worked his ass yeah, off. Yeah, I think what I meant though is that there's it could have very well been, he came on and ignoring the first year where he sort of, but when he got to the games, there was a sense that like, oh, this is the guy who's gonna who's gonna win everything next, mm -hmm. you know? Because we we lived through the Rich Froning era. It was like, mm -hmm. okay, well, that's Matt's gonna take it for the next few years. It, he could have very well. He was good enough then, theoretically, to be the best for a couple of years. The fact that he's still continued to put all of that yeah, work right. and effort into what he's become now is, I mean, it, that alone says everything. And this is, this is the Matt story. Matt's told it well, you know, through a lot of those, um, Nutriforce, um, videos and all the rest, but you know, it's, he never wants to have that feeling that he had when he got second place the second year in a row, yeah. you know, and that's a really driving, motivating factor. It's, you know, people can be motivated by a couple different things. People can be motivated by opportunity and abundance and beauty and love, or they can be motivated by, <laughs> something a little more negative. Yeah, I was going to say hatred. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, And that's not a wrong thing. I no. think you need to blend to both. Yep. And, uh, you also need to know what works for you. Yeah, right. And what is the appropriate blend. Yeah. And some people are 80-20 and some people are 20-80 and 50-50. But, you know, um, you know, I'm a very positive person. I'm a very, you know, I'm, I like to see the silver lining and everything. And having said that, I'm the same way. Like mm -hmm. I'm in, I'm so... I'm, I'm incredibly competitive. Mm -hmm. And I think that gets overshadowed by my, like, I just want people to do their best. Yep. And so, I want people to do their best because I believe it's the way you can be the most competitive. Yep. Is I believe it's the way you can win. I want to win. Like, mm -hmm. I, like, so, you know, the second side of this is like, you know, that's Matt Fraser's story. The second side of it is Katrin's story. Mm -hmm. You know, Katrin coming in fifth, you know, I see it as something that I, I could have done more. Mm -hmm. And it's so insanely motivating for me to do more for her because I believe that she did a lot. She yeah. worked really hard. She did everything I asked of her. I believe I was asking the wrong things. I had some holes in my game. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use that because I know what that feeling was yeah. when she didn't do as well as I thought she was capable of mm -hmm. because of me. Yeah. You know, I take complete ownership of this. It's like, I, I don't think that she was underperformed. I think that she did phenomenally. She was not unfit. Mm -hmm. She won two of the events. Yep. Uh, there was just some holes in my game that I need to fill. And this is the negative side or the dark side. Like I'm incredibly motivated by that. Like I don't want that feeling again. Yeah. Have you been able to, I mean, I'm sure you have, but I don't, depends on what you want to talk about, but how have you been able to identify why those holes that you perceive them in your sort of approach, maybe going into the games, where those holes came from? Was it a, was it just a miscalculation? You thought yep. one thing, but it turned out it should have been another? Or like yeah, it was a miscalculation. Okay. I believe that with her competitiveness, her, um, her fitness, her ability to thrive under pressure, um, her mental toughness, if we, if I got her to the games as fit as she was in previous years, she would do well, mm -hmm. she would win. And that was a miscalculation on my part. Mm -hmm. My goal, first and foremost this year, was uh, to be a little conservative and to get her there healthy. Interesting, yeah. And getting her, and she was extremely healthy this yeah. year. I mean, she had barely a bump or bruise or a torn hand all year long. Uh, you know, everyone in the sport battles things all year long, like in any sport. Yeah. This year she was phenomenally healthy. And it was a miscalculation. Mm. Um, because of that, we weren't pushing the 1% that we were looking for, that we've done in all years past. Yep. We have left no stone unturned. We have made sure that we go there and we are, we know our competitive advantage is that we're the hardest workers there. Mm. And I knew going into this games that we had not done as much work as we had in previous years. Not for her fault. Mm -hmm. She did exactly what I yeah. said. It was a miscalculation on my part and the other girls caught and passed. Yeah, It's... I'm um, actually, you know, a, a huge part of me 
is, and I, I said this to myself before the games, I, I, I'm, I'm glad she didn't win mm -hmm. with that approach. Because all mm, it would have done yeah. is to me is discredited the competition. It would be like, they're, they're, they're just not up to par with her. Yeah. Like she's just better and it's like, we don't have to work that hard. If this is the approach we can take and win, like I'm not that excited about that. Yep. The fact that we took this approach and dropped from first to fifth, like holy crap. Like yeah. this is like, we gotta go. Like we gotta put a fire under it and we gotta go the way we did in the previous two years, which is just so freaking motivating to me. You know, I hate the word motivation because it comes and yeah. goes. Inspiring, there's drive, there's whatever it is. It makes me... Um, excited to get up in the morning and do this. How quickly into the competition did you, did that thought of that being like, ooh, we didn't, we didn't test the right thing or whatever it is, how quickly we, did that thought kind of creep in or was it only after it all sort of like settled down and you were able to get back home? No, it definitely wasn't that. I mean, you're competitive and you always think you have a chance. You always yeah. think you can win. Um, event one, <laughs> run, swim, run, yeah. did not go the way we planned it to at all. Like she is a very good runner. Um, and, um, she came in 14th, mm -hmm. not a great swimmer, she, but she's above average in the field. She came in 11th the previous year in the 500 meter swim. Yep. So really good runner, 11th place in the swim that combined, that should be a top five finish. Mm -hmm. And she came in 14th and didn't look like Katrin. So right there, it gave me kind of like a shockwave of like, I actually like wrote in my notes, I was like, looks sick, looks overtrained, looks dehydrated, um, like something's wrong. Mm -hmm. um, in hindsight, there wasn't necessarily anything wrong. Her running was really good going into that event too. So we didn't undertrain her running this year. Her yeah. running was really strong. I know her numbers relative to the field in pure running training stuff, and she's super competitive. We um, we miscalculated some things in the warm up area and um so that event kind of like took a little bit of like a uh, like a whoa yeah not like a what's wrong what are we gonna right, do right, right. nothing you can't come back from mm -hmm. at all for sure um the one that kind of like which kind of really shocked me was the second running event which was like the big cheese wheel over the hay thing yep. um when again another running event and just a work capacity thing that she should thrive in Sam should win that event. She's, yep. you know, the best. But then Katrin should be competing for second or third with Tia and Christy Ramo and those girls there. And again, she was in the 14th. And that's the one that was like, oh, like we missed something. Mm. We missed, there's something missing. That that bite, that charge, that um, extra something that we had in the previous two years was not there. Um, and those to me are the two events that um, were the most um surprising to me mm -hmm. the other events that Catherine didn't do either well in we knew she wouldn't do that well in yep. super heavy cleans i know where she's going to be um super high rep muscle ups i know where she's going to be that's where she's going to be in that you know 15th to 25th and she finished in the back side of each of those which is unfortunate um and that's where i think our fitness where we didn't put the pedal down best case scenario in those events with those movements she's the 15th place mm -hmm. in the squat clean ladder the year she won she finished 15th or 14th, mm -hmm. which is the best case scenario. That's like she can use just all of her smarts and her toughness and her pacing and her ability to know herself and her grit and determination to get it to basically outperform people that are fitter than her. Yep. This year, because she didn't have that, she was battling other things other than just like, where's my very best 1%? Mm -hmm. When... Um when is it time for you and Catherine, and you really and everybody to say, okay, we learned what we're going to learn and now it's time to, to next season or, you know, yep. time to turn the page and move on. Um, so we do a lot, uh, and we do and did a lot of debriefing, um, the, the day of, and the day after the games, I think you just got to get it out. Yeah. It's like when you, it's, if you don't, it's the, emo yeah. the emotional kind of like bubble just kind of sits there in your throat and it's kind of like, you never get to burp you yep. know it's like <laughs> yeah you know for as crude of analogy that yeah. is so we do a lot of just talking it out there i go through all my notes from the weekend and talk about like how i think that you know we prepared and what we did there and what we could do better going forward and then kind of let it digest for a little bit and then we're just getting back into 
now 2018. Mm -hmm. So the way I've done that is um, next week is day one of full on, you know, periodized every day has a purpose planning. Mm -hmm. You know, up until now, it's been the first week is just do nothing. (laughs) Just like go, you know, whatever. Don't take your sweatpants off and (laughs) put keep the remote in your hand if you want to. Um, Weeks uh, two, three, and four, essentially after that are kind of like go in the gym and do what you want to do. And let's just build up to where we're kind of doing some sort of volume, some sort of intensity, but it's, we'll do what feels good and don't push anything that's not there. And now we create that, um, you know, next Monday, we'll start the, the real deal September 1st. Gotcha. So about a month between. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It's a month. Um, Cole and Brooke both obviously came off really good, big years for them. And just in terms of of placing Mm -hmm. talk to me about what you learned with with either of them or both of them um this year yeah so um brooke this is my first year coaching brooke brooke was um uh did phenomenally two years ago and then had a setback year this year um you know the thing i loved about her this year was it's a battle like when you're not doing as well and big expectations for her this year you know she um she got really, really fit this year. Mm. And then the events just, you know, unless you're like one of those top like podium contenders, and really I think it's like top one or two places on the male or female side, a lot of the other ones, it's like, how do the events line up for you? Mm -hmm. You know, if you get a couple that swing your way and it's like huge jumps versus ones. So let's take like, you're gonna get the, the middle of the road events. Let's take some outlier events. Let's say you're a really athletic person and you get something like the obstacle course yep. versus something like Murph. Yep. Like, oh my God, like that's a 80 point potential swing. You know, you get two of those and it's the difference of six or 26. Yep. So I'm not saying it's a programming because it wasn't. This was a building year for Brooke. This was much, I would equate this much to, you know, a top level golfer rebuilding their swing to come back stronger. Yep. And the cool thing that I loved about it was after the event was over, you know, I'm talking to her after the whole event was over, um, talking to Brooke and trying to get her feel for it. And she said, I'm just, I know how fit I am. I am so excited for next year. I know I'm fitter this year than I was last year. And she is, I mean, you take her numbers across the board, not her placings in the games, those are different events, but her numbers and training things across the board, she cleans up her previous numbers. So now that we've created this base, this should be a very exciting year for Brooke. Is she still in school for the next year? She is. Yeah. Is so, that? Yeah, that's a. I mean, that's a, I mean, you you see it over the years, like the athletes who decide that they're really going to take it seriously, they find a way to yep. put everything else off to the side. Is that something that you guys have considered, or she's considered really, but have, that you guys talked about? Um, we've or? talked about it, and I've talked about it, um, not uh, very in depth, or because it's just really obvious that this is something that's important to her, yeah. just to finish her school in four years. Yeah. Um, you know, I talked to Katrin about that. It was a different story and Katrin stopped school. Um, you know, Matt finished school as well. So it's, it's people that are doing it. You know, Brent Fikowski is still works a 40 hour work week as an accountant. It's like, it can be done. Yep. Um, so she is still in school. It is not an optimal situation. Um, so she's got another year of that before she is a full time, legit professional athlete. She's still so young though. So I mean, it's, yeah. Uh, Cole. Cole, um, so Cole did, um, battled some things, um, going into the games and then during the games, um, that's his story to tell if he wants to tell it, um, physically, I mean, um, and then, uh, so he didn't perform where he wanted to. Having said that, I think he performed above and beyond what he wanted to. The fact he got, Cole is a really amazing person. Yeah. You know, you, a lot of people say the right stuff but it's easy to say the right stuff. He backs up all of what he says with real actions. You know, one of the things that stuck out to me was, you know, we are on Cape Cod doing training camp stuff leading up to the games. We're doing a lot of sharing about ourselves. And, you know, I have the people do all, all these like personality questionnaires and everything to try to really get to know themselves and each other. And one of the things that came to light, he said, if it ever came to a time during the games where there was a decision I had to make between doing something to help one of you, and he means the other athletes, you know, Katrin, Brooke, myself, 
and that meant me doing worse in the games, I would do that thing in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't be a question because that's what I'm on earth to do. I'm on earth to give and to serve others. And he says that and like, you're like, yeah, okay. I tell you what, other people say that and you're like, yeah, okay, mm -hmm. whatever. Like, that's really good talk, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's the truth with Cole. Yeah. It is, he would rather have you succeed and feel good, if it, even if it means him not doing as well, that's his goal. It's really his goal. His goal is to do well at the games, not because it brings fame, fortune, notoriety, pride, or prestige. He wants to do well at the games because it builds a bigger platform. And with a bigger platform, he can help and affect more people. Mm -hmm. That's the deal. It has nothing to do with anything else. And other people might say that. And again, you're like, that's really good talk. He's the real deal. So the fact that he was recognized for the Spirit of the Games Award yeah. was in in incredible. It was a highlight. It was I me. Mean, it was it was my favorite moment of the games. Yeah. You know, after the games, I was in the athlete warm up area by myself. There's nobody back there other than me, like three volunteers cleaning up. Everyone else is in the stadium. All the athletes, all the coaches, and there's a TV on, and I'm not even watching the announcements and the volumes down really low until out of the corner of my eye, I see Nicole Carroll get up and I know what that means. It's that she's gonna present the Spirit of the Games work. So it's something I'm really interested in. It's something I'm really passionate about is that award, more so than all the others. So I got up, walked across the whole warm-up area and go into the TV and turned up the volume just so I could watch that announcement, yeah. not knowing it was gonna be right. Cole. Yeah. And they announced Cole and it's like, duh. Yeah, of, course exactly it's yeah. of course it's yeah. Cole. Of course it's Cole. There's no better choice in the world. <clears throat> So he, you know, when he came back, I told him how much that meant, you know, to me to have a person like him in my life. And, um, you know, he's a special man. Yeah. Agreed. And I've only spent just a fraction yeah. of the amount of time that yeah. you have with him. Um, very cool. Uh, any sort of other wrap up from the games, anything worth mentioning before we sign off? No, I, I think that, uh, you know, I think it's, um, the CrossFit games, I believe, improve year after year. Mm -hmm. I believe that when you kind of look at what the test is, I think the test year after year improves. And I, I loved this year's overall test. You know, it's really cool to see, you know, look at the guy's podium. You have the tallest, biggest athlete on the floor in Brian Fikowski in second place with two of the shortest athletes, Matt Fraser and Ricky Garrard, on mm -hmm. the podium next to him. Yep. That's a pretty You've cool. Really seen that since 2009. Really was, cool. Yeah. <laughs> then look at the girls' side. Yeah. You have one of the smaller athletes in Tia Claire Toomey, weighs yeah. under 130, 120 pounds, on the podium, standing next to Kara Webb, who's one of our bigger athletes. Yep. It's just like the programming is not favoring anybody; it's favoring the fittest. Mm -hmm. And I love that. If you were to like just turn the TV on and see for the first time, it looks a little bit more like the old like wide world of sports. It's just mm -hmm. like, look at what these guys can do. It doesn't matter what we throw at them. They're good at it. And we're, it's not just a bunch of like thrusters and pull-ups. It's a piece of it, but that shouldn't be, it should not be kettlebell swings, burpees, thrusters, pull-ups, and double unders. That's what the opens for. And I tests. Yeah. And I love the fact that it's getting to this other thing and the other tests are not necessarily Murph with pull-ups, pull -up and you know running and you know, push-ups and all that stuff. The other tests are obstacle courses and mm -hmm. biking mm -hmm. and running and swimming and um, sledgehammers. And I I think it's cool that we're putting just kind of like this. These athletes truly are the fittest athletes in the world, and I think that the doubt surrounding that is getting fewer and farther between. It's just like. Yeah. They're really cementing the fact that they're doing things that are other uh, incapable for the 99.99999% of all other athletes, including professional athletes in other sports. Yep.